Oh my god, they made a 107 facts video about Kenny. You better believe we did. Kenny McCormick has been around since South Park's earliest days and he's not leaving anytime soon unless South Park decides to kill him off again. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This is 107 facts about Kenny McCormick. Welcome to Channel Frederator, the cartoon central of the internet. Before we begin, we publish new videos every week, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Number 1. Kenny is voiced by South Park co-creator Matt Stone. Number 2. Doing the Kenny voice is actually pretty easy. Stone simply cups his hands over his mouth, but he doesn't just mumble. Kenny has actual lines. Number 3. Like the other kids in South Park, Matt Stone originally did Kenny's voice without modulation, but it has since been digitally pitched up. Number 4. Because Kenny's lines are usually inconsequential, Matt Stone takes the opportunity to improvise with the character, often saying things that would make censors shudder. Number 5. There are times that we do hear Kenny though. His voice can be heard unmuffled in episodes like The Losing Edge, The Jeffersons, and You're Getting Old. Number 6. In a number of those instances, it's not always Matt Stone doing Kenny's voice. Sometimes Kenny is voiced by South Park animation director slash producer Eric Stowe. Number 7. You can also hear Kenny unmuffled by his parka at the end of the South Park movie. South Park. Bigger, longer, and uncut. Number 8. In that instance, when he simply says, goodbye you guys, he's actually voiced by Mike Judge, creator of King of the Hill and Beavis and Butthead, among other things. Number 9. That's also the first time we see Kenny without his orange parka. You can see his full face and even his messy blonde hair. Number 10. To date, this is the only time Kenny's full face has been seen without anything obscuring it, though he's appeared without his classic parka on a few different occasions. Number 11. When the boys are trying to help Mr. Jefferson's son Blanket escape, they sub Kenny in Blanket's place. You can't see Kenny's eyes due to the mask he's wearing, but you can see the rest of his face, including his hair. Number 12. You can also see Kenny completely unhooded in You're Getting Old. He's only wearing a birthday hat on his head at Stan's 10th birthday party. Number 13. In the episode The Losing Edge, while you can see most of Kenny's face, his hat is pulled down lower than the other boys, partially covering one of his eyes. Number 14. While we're on the subject, Kenny canonically has blue eyes. We first learned Kenny's eye color when a turkey pulled it out in the episode Starvin' Marvin. Number 15. You can also see Kenny's blue eyes when Kenny's traditional model is morphed into an anime style in Good Times with Weapons. Number 16. Funny enough, Kenny was actually inspired by a real person. Trey Parker had a childhood friend who wore an orange parka that muffled his voice. The kid was even named Kenny. Number 17. Also, just like the character Kenny, Parker's friend Kenny was the poorest kid in the neighborhood. When writing the show, Parker and Stone knew the kids needed to have a poor kid to capture the feeling that every middle class town had. Number 18. The real life Kenny would also regularly skip school. Parker would joke to his friends that Kenny died when he was absent, leading to the now famous long running gag in South Park. Number 19. The joke about Kenny dying first appeared in The Spirit of Christmas, Jesus vs. Frosty, a short made by Matt Stone and Trey Parker in 1992 while they were in college at the University of Colorado. Number 20. Kenny's wearing his signature orange parka. However, in this first iteration, you can still see his full face, nose, mouth, and all. Number 21. Even stranger, he's not called Kenny. Instead, the character that resembles Cartman is called Kenny, and he's the one who gets killed. Number 22. However, Kenny's next appearance would solidify the character as we know him. 1995's The Spirit of Christmas Jesus vs. Santa. This time, the real Kenny gets killed, complete with the rats almost immediately swarming his corpse. Number 23. The running gag of killing Kenny would last throughout the first five seasons of South Park, with Kenny dying in nearly every episode. Number 24. In an unaired pilot version of South Park's first episode, Cartman gets an anal probe, Kenny is actually brought back to life in the end. However, he stays dead for the actual episode. Number 25. The first episode that Kenny survived was episode 9 of the first season, Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh. He had a number of close calls throughout the episode teasing Kenny's death, but Kenny managed to escape unharmed. Number 26. Parker and Stone decided they'd let Kenny live because it was Christmas. Of course, Kenny would go on to get killed in plenty of subsequent Christmas episodes. Number 27. Kenny did manage to survive a number of times during the early years of South Park though. Kenny's death in City on the Edge of Forever flashbacks took place inside of Stan's dream, so the real Kenny technically made it out alive. Number 28. 
in Rainforest Schmain Forest, Kenny gets struck by lightning, but lucky for him, his new girlfriend Kelly saves him with CPR. Number 29. For the two-parter episode, Do the Handicapped Go to Hell slash Probably, Kenny survives thanks to a continuity error. He appears to be killed when he's hit by a bus that leaves his body behind in the first part. However, in part two, his still alive body is scraped from the bottom of the bus. Number 30. A kid who's dressed as Kenny dies in the episode Fat Camp in a way that I won't dare describe on YouTube. Meanwhile, the real Kenny was alive and well in a New York jail for doing something to Howard Stern that I also won't dare describe on YouTube. Number 31. Of course, Kenny had a couple of close calls along the way. In the episode Terrence and Philip Behind the Blow, Kenny is shown having all four of his limbs cut off but not actually dying. Number 32. Meanwhile, in Cripple Fight, Kenny is simply carried off by a hawk. However, he pops up later in the episode among the scouts, so he does turn out to be just fine. Number 33. Towards the end of Starvin Marvin in Space, Kenny ends up getting frozen in Carbonite, just like Han Solo. Of course, we know Han Solo ended up surviving the process, so even though Kenny is never unfrozen in the episode, we can believe that he's still alive in there. Number 34. Kenny even had three different brushes with death in just one episode. Chicken Lover. First, he was almost crushed by a flipped car. Second, he gets sent flying into a brick wall. And third, he appears to be shot only to get up unharmed. Number 35. Stan had felt tricked so many times that he even got frustrated and said, damn it. Sure enough, Kenny gets killed at the end of the episode when a tree falls on him. Number 36. Some episodes, Kenny survives just by not being there. He doesn't appear in Pip, obviously, but he also doesn't show up in Cat Orgy or Two Guys Naked in a Hot Tub. Number 37. However, Kenny technically dies during the events of Cat Orgy and Two Guys Naked in a Hot Tub. Both episodes take place during the same night that Jubilee takes place, during which Kenny dies freeing Moses. It's a long story. Number 38. Just like in Jubilee, Kenny's deaths aren't always a freak accident. Sometimes he dies a hero. In the South Park movie, while he's actually dead for most of the film, he gives up his wish to come back to life to restore the world to the peace it enjoyed before the war with Canada. Number 39. In another example, Kenny gets electrocuted while connecting two wires to selflessly fix the generator for Hell's Pass Hospital. Number 40. Even while dead, Kenny still manages to save the day, like when he defeated Satan's army by using a golden PSP from heaven. Number 41. Of course, Kenny's known to be a great hero as his alter ego, Mysterion. As Mysterion, he even protected his sister Karen, saving her from a bully and getting sprayed with Dr. Pepper by their foster parents. Number 42. As for Kenny's other family members, he lives with his dad Stuart, his mom Carol, and his older brother Kevin. Number 43. Kenny also has a living grandfather. At least he did. Kenny's grandfather only appeared one time in the episode Fat Camp. He doesn't have a name or one that we know at least, and didn't even say anything in his brief appearance. Number 44. Also, in a way, Kenny is part of Stan's family. In the episode Volcano, Stan's uncle Jimbo makes Kenny his honorary nephew. Number 45. While Kenny's brother Kevin has been around since the early days of South Park, Karen didn't actually appear until 2005 with the episode Best Friends Forever, the same one where Kenny saved heaven with the golden PSP. Number 46. The whole premise of that episode was based on the real-life case of Terry Schiavo. The whole premise of that episode was based on the real-life case of Terry Schiavo, a woman in a vegetative state like Kenny's with her husband and parents legally fighting over her medical custody. Number 47. Actually, Best Friends Forever is the episode that won South Park its first Emmy. Number 48. Oh, and Matt Stone and Trey Parker themselves confirmed that the they and the bastards in They Killed Kenny is self-referential. Kyle is referring to the creators of the show themselves. Bastards, breaking the fourth wall. Number 49. Of course, the running gag became something of a catchphrase for the whole show. The line appeared in all kinds of late 90s, early 2000s material as reference, such as Boy Meets World, Xena, Warrior Princess, and even the Animorphs books. Number 50. The series of Fallout video games have referenced Kenny a number of times. In the first Fallout game, there's a character named Deputy Kenny. Sure enough, when he's killed, a message pops up on his computer that reads, Oh my god, they killed Kenny. Number 51. 
Fallout 3 has a few Kenny shoutouts too. In the Operation Anchorage DLC, there's a character named Major McCormick, spelt with a K, not a C. When he gets shot in the head, another soldier shouts, Oh my god, they killed McCormick! You gotta kill those bastards! Number 52. Also, in the Point Lookout DLC, there's a little kid named Kenny living in the swamp, raised by the swamp people of the area. He's skilled at setting traps and even whistles part of the South Park theme song. Number 53. Oh my god, they killed Kenny has also appeared on a slew of South Park merchandise. Everything from shirts, hats, to bumper stickers. Number 54. The whole joke even got its own song, Kenny's Dead by Master P, a parody of the Curtis Mayfield song Freddy's Dead. Number 55. Kenny has even popped up in the world of academia. Southern Illinois University philosophy professor Randall Oxler penned an essay titled Killing Kenny, Our Daily Dose of Death, which details how Kenny's regular death gag can help viewers come to better terms with their own inevitable demise. Number 56. Oxler's essay actually appeared in a whole book analyzing South Park called South Park and Philosophy. Bigger, longer, and more penetrating. Number 57. Another Kenny-based essay by Karen Fry, a professor at University of Wisconsin-Stevens Point, is about Kenny's character and how it relates to the themes of existentialism. Number 58. Fry's essay appears in a different South Park and Philosophy book, the one subtitled, you know, I learned something today. Number 59. At the University of Strasbourg, Sobe Rutsch discovered a mutation in adult fruit flies which caused them to die two days after they're infected with a particular bacteria. She named the mutation gene Kenny after the character from South Park. Number 60. By the end of season 5, Parker and Stone were sick of the gag themselves, so they decided to kill Kenny off for good with episode 13 of season 5, fittingly titled Kenny Dies. Number 61. While coming up with creative ways for Kenny to die had been fun for a while, Parker and Stone got tired of constantly thinking of new, interesting ways for it to happen. Number 62. They were actually originally considering to kill Kyle off, but that was only planned to be for a year. Number 63. By this point, the creators considered Kenny to be less of a character and more of a prop. Stone even called him an orange blob that just moves around. With no discernible way to develop his character, South Park officially gave Kenny the axe for keeps this time. Number 64. As for his death in that episode, he died of a terminal case of muscular dystrophy, or at least that's what he appears to have had. We never got a proper diagnosis. Number 65. At the time, a small portion of South Park fans were so outraged by Kenny's seemingly permanent death that they threatened to boycott Comedy Central, the channel that aired and still airs South Park. Number 66. As far as the friend group goes, Kenny was effectively replaced by Butters Stotch, who even got his own episode as the season finale, fittingly titled Butters' Very Own Episode. Number 67. Butters' episode was designed as a kind of formal introduction for him, as he was planned to take a bigger role in the spotlight for the next season. Number 68. Butters was picked because at the time he was quickly becoming one of the more popular characters among fans. Number 69. As the season went on, Butters was eventually booted as Kenny's replacement in the crew, replaced by the hyperactive, coffee-addled Tweak Tweak. Number 70. Though Kenny was officially dead, he was still there, spiritually and literally. Later in the season, Cartman drinks Kenny's ashes thinking they were chocolate milk mix. Kenny's soul then inhabits Cartman's body, occasionally possessing Cartman and chiming in as Cartman channeled his words. Number 71. From here, Kenny's soul is exercised from Cartman's body into a pot roast, which is then eaten by Rob Schneider, making him Kenny's new host until he also dies, presumably freeing Kenny's soul. Number 72. Rob Schneider actually died by being impaled by a flagpole, just like how Kenny was in the episode Weight Gain 4000. Number 73. Kenny wouldn't reappear in his own body until the end of season Six's finale, Red Slay Down. He simply shows up, totally fine. Turns out he'd just been hanging out the whole time, no explanation given. Number 74. Kenny was alive and the running gag was dead, but South Park would occasionally bust it out from time to time. After his return in Red Slay Down, Kenny wouldn't die again until Saddam Hussein destroyed him with laser vision in the season 7 finale, It's Christmas in Canada. Number 75. While there's no explanation given as to how Kenny returned, we do eventually get some explanation as to Kenny's curse 
Myths of Immortality. The earliest in-show explanation actually appears in the Season 4 episode, Cartman Joins Nambla. Number 76. In this episode, we see Kenny die, only to be reborn as a totally different baby, his soul seemingly returning to his mother's womb. Number 77. Carol even mentions that it's the 52nd time that it's happened, making that newborn Kenny the 52nd incarnation of him. Number 78. The most recent explanation comes from the series of episodes featuring Kenny's run as Mysterion. Kenny's superpower is that every time he dies, his mom gives birth to him once again and he awakens in his bed, aged up to the same age. Number 79. Though he remembers everything, including how he died, mysteriously, nobody else in his life remembers him ever dying. Number 80. Turns out that Kenny's ever-continuing cycle of rebirth and immortality may have some connection to the cult of Cthulhu. Carol mentions that she and Stuart never should have gone to those cult meetings. Number 81. There's even a picture in the Necronomicon showing a group of cultists standing in a circle around a pentagram, attempting to summon an old one. At the center of that circle is a baby. It's possible that this ritual was performed on Kenny when he was a baby, giving him his powers. Number 82. For the record, it's not like Kenny's parents were devout Cthulhu worshippers. They just said they went to the cult meetings for the free booze. Number 83. However, while Kenny himself says that nobody ever remembers his deaths, this contradicts a couple of moments from earlier in the series. For example, in Cartman Land, when Cartman is being sued for Kenny's death, he protests that he dies all the time. Number 84. Other times, other characters have reacted to Kenny's death like it was business as usual, which it was at the time. In Chef Goes Nanners, after Kenny explodes from drinking water and eating antacid tablets, everyone laughs, and Stan says that was a good one. Number 85. Also, in fourth grade, when Kenny dies on a sled, Stan plainly states, well, who didn't see that coming? Number 86. Thing is, many of these early season deaths aren't considered canon in the way that his death in Kenny dies or the Mysterion episodes are. Number 87. Even before the now seemingly canon explanation of Kenny's power, Trey Parker offered a few different explanations. At one point, when asked why Kenny dies, he simply explained that it's because he's poor. Number 88. Parker has also said that Kenny was a supernatural demigod, and even his resurrection in Red Slade Down was somehow tied to Jesus' death in that same episode. Number 89. Whether canon or not, in total, Kenny has died 126 times across the entire South Park franchise, including the series itself, movies, shorts, and video games. Number 90. Kenny even dies during South Park's opening number. From season 7 to 11, you see Kenny get his head cut off by a pair of scissors during each episode's title sequence. Number 91. Despite what he's famous for, Kenny is more than just his deaths. He's a multi-talented renaissance man. For example, we learn that he's fluent in Romanian when he talks to the quintuplets in Quint Tuplets 2000. Number 92. In this same episode, we also see firsthand how talented of an opera singer Kenny is. Even before he makes it big in Romania, he sings La Donna Immobile from Rigoletto, an opera by Giuseppe Verdi. Number 93. Kenny can do more than just sing though. He can also play the drums. He played the snare drum during a Civil War reenactment and was also the drummer in Moop playing alongside Stan and Kyle. Number 94. He can play more than the drums, too. We can see that he clearly knows his way around a five-string bass when he's playing Second Skin by Dying Fetus as part of Crimson Dawn. Number 95. Kenny's a music fan, too. In particular, he seems to dig Peruvian flute music. He couldn't help but dance anytime the boys pass by a Peruvian flute band at the mall. Number 96. It's not enough for Kenny to sing and dance. He's a full-on triple threat with a penchant for theatricality. He managed to capture hearts and minds the world over as his enchanting alter ego, Princess Kenny. Number 97. Also, he's able to deliver passionate performances as his luchador wrestling persona, El Pollo Loco. Number 98. Kenny is certainly athletic enough to be a wrestler too. We've seen him do a backflip while infiltrating a military base and easily walk on his hands without stumbling, all while his butt is sticking out of his hood. Number 99. Also, we've already talked a bit about Kenny's gaming prowess too. He managed to reach level 60 in Heaven vs. Hell, passing God's test to become the Keanu Reeves of Heaven and defeat Satan's army. Number 100. Perhaps even more impressively, Kenny played a human hunter in World of Warcraft, a race class combination that wouldn't be possible in the game for another four years until the Cataclysm expansion. Number 101. Kenny is also shown to be a ruthless Magic the Gathering player. He's defeated the likes of Slaughterhouse and even the legendary Gadnuk, Breaker of Worlds. Number 102. Kenny's even more dangerous as a weapons expert, as Professor Chaos has seen first hand, Kenny is perfectly accurate with a ninja star. Number 103. Firearms are no different for him. Kenny quickly took to hunting in the volcano episode when he handily took down a ram with a shotgun. 
Number 104. Kenny was also able to get his hands on a sniper rifle in Poor and Stupid, but wasn't able to put it to work before losing it to a security guard. Number 105. Kenny loves NASCAR. That's the whole reason he acquired the sniper rifle in the first place. He loves NASCAR so much that he was looking to take Cartman out so he'd stop ruining it. Number 106. We've also seen that Kenny has an aptitude for demolitions and explosions. While he wasn't able to defuse the bomb on Timmy's wheelchair in time, he did manage to destroy the future telling device with an explosion large enough to be seen from space. Number 107. Finally, as we see in the future timeline of South Park post-COVID, Kenny eventually goes on to become a Nobel Prize winning humanitarian and scientist, keen to share his kindness and discoveries to make the world a better place. Who knows what else the world of South Park has in store for Kenny McCormick. If you want to see what else Channel Frederator has in store for you, then be sure to subscribe. We've got as many facts as Kenny has lives, and more. Did you enjoy our video? What facts do you think we missed? Let us know in the comments down below. And while you're there, like and subscribe to see more great videos every week. And remember, Frederator loves you.